I was in the depths of my grief about my mom. I was having a really hard time. And I was walking around and, and feeling angry a lot. I felt like I couldn't express any other emotion. So I was having these moments with men in the street where I, I took a picture of a restaurant and there was a, fl I accidentally had the flash on and the flash bounced back and this guy came out of nowhere and was like, are you taking a picture of my car? It, it was clear he didn't care if I took a picture of his car or not. Like he just wanted to have a fight. And I think that moment of realizing that I too just wanted to have a fight, like I was so frustrated. And here was this person offering this opportunity to let out my frustration and a part of me really wanted to take it. That was when I decided to write the book. As an amateur, as somebody who transitioned when I was 30, I came to write the book because I, um, I had a, a few years uh, where I just had a lot of questions and I was looking to the men in my life and asking those questions and nobody really had answers and, or the answers they had were just sort of like, that's just the way things are or men are just this way or men are just like that or you're not that kind of man. And then that wasn't satisfying to me. I, I, I felt like something about the social expectations of masculinity uh, were troubling to me even when I felt happy in my body. So instead of saying, well, I'm, I'm you know, that's just how guys are, uh, I decided I would start asking questions about, well, why, are, why is this expected of me? And uh, those questions led me to learning how to fight, training to box, fighting in Madison Square Garden. And then throughout that whole process, I just kept track of all the other questions I had about, you know, why men don't touch each other or about uh, the privileges I was getting at work during that time, especially like walking around with boxing gloves, you know? And, and so when I was done with the process of learning to fight, I then reported out all the other questions too about masculinity. The definition of toxic masculinity is not anything to do with masculinity specifically. It has to do with socialized, um, expectations that um, men have to be dominant, not show weakness, not show emotion. What I really was trying to do is figure out like where that was relevant in my life and why that was happening. <laughs> and so boxing was just a way for me to tangle with aggression and, uh, and violence and things that I think actually all people should learn how to manage and deal with. And I actually learned a lot about where I had not been socialized to be assertive or aggressive because of my experience before my transition. And, you know, if anything, it was an empowering experience learning how to do those things and to do them with men and in relationship to men. What was most fascinating was that the men I was training with were really demonstrating qualities that I think I was really hungry to have in my life, like, you know, intimacy, affection, support, um, a sense of like mutuality as we like work towards a goal together. I personally, you know, I, I don't, I was surprised. I, I'm a boxing fan, but I didn't totally understand how exposing it is to learn how to fight because, you know, there's nobody else there but you in the ring. So you can't really cover weaknesses. You just have to learn to work with them. So when you're training to fight with other people, like they see everything about you, including your like psychological blocks and your emotional blocks. So uh, it was a surprisingly nurturing environment. And I learned a lot about how to have intimacy with the men in my life from boxing. I actually didn't experience it as, as toxic overall. What's, what's happening with trans people is our existence is a threat to the status quo. When you really dig deep enough, all of these issues are about preserving power for the people who have power by making sure that we police out of existence anyone who threatens that power. So when it comes to like trans athletes in sports, I mean, I wrote a whole story about this for Playboy. Trans women specifically uh, produce less testosterone than cis women. So actually, if you wanna literally look at it in terms of like, testosterone and advantage, advantage, which we're not even sure is real, but if it is real, trans women are of no threat. Um, trans women do not dominate the sports that they compete in. So this is an illogical fear that is connected to all the other illogical fears that are about making sure that gender stays a binary and that it stays a binary so that it can stay a power structure. I really thought for a second, like maybe there is, maybe that is what it is. Maybe being a man means fighting. Maybe that's, that's how this all goes. But when learning to fight and reporting out the book, that wasn't true. So what I really learned was, you know, the way we think about what being a man means is completely defining socially what being a man means. And if we don't like what being a man means, if, if you are a man and you don't like the status quo, it's completely on you to change the status quo.